Welcome back, mother lovers, to a brand new episode of Last Call at McLaren's, the best damn How I Met Your Mother podcast on the internet. I am one of your hosts, Josh, here with my best bud, John. How you doing, man? Bro, I'm great. Welcome. I'm, I'm glad to be back after, you know, a couple weeks of uh, yeah. missing again. It's true, but we're going to knock these episodes out so that we can get ready for some How I Met Your Father in a couple of weeks. Hell, it's gonna, yeah. It's going to be good times. Hopefully they're not affected by the, the writer's strike currently going on. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think so. I think they probably had them all finished by then, but I guess you never know. You know, it's always possible that uh, if we get toward the end and, oop, we didn't get to finish. That would suck. I mean, that would suck. Yeah, so I, I hope that they did get to finish uh, filming everything before <laughs> before that started. So, But, uh, yeah, so we are here to talk Season 3, Episode 17, The Goat. The Goat! That's right. The uh, greatest of all time. Yes. Ted Mosby. <laughs> no. No, John. <laughs> uh, this episode originally aired on April 28th of 2008. It was directed. Oh, we're, we're pretty close to that actual time in real life. It's Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it was uh, directed by Pamela Fryman. Of course, you know, Be the great cry. Pamela Fryman. Written by Stephen Lloyd who previously did Brunch and Spoiler Alert, and uh, it goes on to do some great episodes, including Intervention, The Wedding Bride, and The Exploding Meatball Sub. It's funny that he would go on to do The Wedding Bride, because that is such a big Stella episode. It really is, like, man. That's yeah. a huge one. Like I guess like you could honestly say he wrote some of her best <clears throat> storylines then. I guess so, yeah. Because this is a huge one for her. Um, well, no, no, sorry, the next one is. The next one is, she's not, I mean, she's mentioned in this, but, you know, it's still, it's taking place during that time frame, so he's obviously, and he's, he's one of the people who's in that, in the writer's room, because they had a, they have a big writer's room of people who work on these, and so, like, he obviously, he's there throughout the entirety of this, so. So, so let me ask you this, because I don't think we've ever really talked about this, and before we dive into the episode, (laughs) who's your favorite writer on this show? Do you have one? I mean, it's probably the showrunners because I feel like they've done some of my favorites. But um, if I'm if I'm not gonna go with them, probably Courtney Kang. She she's one of my favorites. She she's the one we talked about uh, last episode. She she's the the what I call the resident Robin Sparkles writer. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I you mean, know, you so, can't go wrong with that then. So like you know, she wrote uh, the first. She wrote Slap Bet. You know what I mean? Like that's one of my favorite episodes of all time fair you know and so uh i think i think it's probably got to be courtney king yeah all right so side question <clears throat> to my question if the uh what's if, if all during games existed in real life and slap bet was a real game would you purchase it oh absolutely could we play it oh 100 <laughs> percent. fair enough <laughs> that was a thing we'd be playing it for this podcast <laughs> yes <laughs> down for that patreon exclusive people i'm gonna see if there are like because you know how like people like make up games based on shows mm-hmm. i'm gonna see if anybody might have came up with a real version of slap bet oh probably i wouldn't be surprised i, mm. I really i would not be surprised i yeah. i mean there there'd be some Kill I mean, so that I hear somebody you. went through the process of putting together uh, Marsh Gammon, so why not? Oh man, we gotta play Marsh Gammon for their yeah. Patreon because we talked about that when that episode came up. I forgot about that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, I had found like the rules and stuff to it. I was like, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, I believe Barney's winning right now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, uh, so also Stephen Lloyd. Uh, after he did How I Met Your Mother, because I wrote, I wrote this down, I wanted to say, he went on to write and produce on a show that you just recently watched, Modern Family. Oh, shit, no way. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, yeah. that's a good show, too. I liked Modern Family. Yeah, I thought that was uh, an interesting little uh, little tidbit. It, it definitely, minus the language, because obviously it's a, it was a primetime show, so they couldn't do a lot of the swearing and stuff. Yeah. It reminded me realistically of like what a real family would go through. Like you got like the three children and the one family, and then you got the adopted one. And like there are so many great little one liners that happen in that show that like like there's an episode where um Cam and uh 
fuck, what's his name? And his husband there. Who I yeah, can't remember, yeah, I can't remember his name. It starts with, I want to say it's whatever his name is. Uh, they get a brand new couch and Lily wants to sit on it, which is their daughter. Yeah. And they're like, well, you can't sit on the couch because you might make a mess. And she goes, well, the cat gets to sit on the couch. And they go, it's because the cat's white. And it's like an all-white cat. And she goes, oh, well, you adopted me. And she goes <laughs> walking off. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, it's Cam and Mitchell. Mitchell, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm just like, holy shit. I'm like, they really did that on this show. Yeah, that's one of those shows that, like, I've watched here and there. Like, you catch reruns of it, you know, when, you know, when I had cable back in the day. Uh, but it's one that I, I've always wanted to go and, and watch the whole thing of. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll sit down. I ended up it. catching on to it because of, like, Facebook reels and YouTube reels and stuff oh. like that. Like, I'd always see, like, the little clips from the show. Yeah, yeah. And one of the ones that always made me laugh was there's a, a late – season episode where um they get um the main family with the three kids yeah uh they get new the neighbors Dunfees. the dunfees thank you they get a new set of neighbors and they're trying to impress them so they're outside and they're like doing like yard work and she uh the mom turns and she's like luke grab that hoe and he puts his arm around Haley, and Haley goes that's not what she meant and then she turns to her mom and she's like Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that clip. Uh, just the clip, though, but yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, damn. Good stuff. <laughs> Again, though, little one liners, man. Like, there, there's also, and this is like, I know we're getting off of How I Met Your Mother stuff, but there's um, a series of Halloween episodes where, um, like, the Dunfees are really big into Halloween. Like, they like to scare people. Uh, Claire specifically likes to scare people. And I'm always like, damn, it reminds me of the heist. Oh, like, you yeah, get great yeah. things from them because, like, it's always like, well, how, how big can we go this Halloween? Yeah. So I that's like a, shit like that's that. That's a Brooklyn Nine-Nine reference for all you out there who don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Nine-Nine. Nine-Nine. Uh, all right. Yes. Back okay. to How I Met Your Mother. Back to How I Met Your Mother. Summary for uh, Season 3, Episode 17, The Goat, reads as follows. Uh, Lily brings a goat home from school. Ted celebrates his 30th birthday. Barney and Robin deal with the repercussions from their night together. Barney hires Marshall to help him find a loophole in the bro code. That's actually a good synopsis. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd All say right. that's probably one of the better ones I've heard in a while. Yeah, yeah, they, they touched uh, on pretty much everything. Yeah. Although, honestly, I don't know that saying Lily brings a goat home from school is the exact way to explain that. I'd say she saves a goat's life. Sure. <laughs> uh, and technically she didn't do any of that <laughs> as we learn later on <laughs> alright so episode starts future Ted he starts things off by telling the story of his 30th birthday and the goat the goat uh, Ted's birthday April 25th we find out we which just happened to pass by recently so happy belated 45th birthday to Ted Mosby oh my god he's 45 Yep. Damn, just, he ain't much older than us. Right, he just turned 45. He's, uh, you know, on his way to the big 5-0. Well, mm -hmm. think, the, think about this. When we were watching How I Met Your Mother, we were watching it as like it was slightly in the future for us. Yeah, just a little, yeah, a little bit. Because you know, we would have been in our mid-20s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Ted is six years older than us, so yeah. We're Damn. Just looking just down the road. Seeing Damn. How, see, seeing where it comes. <laughs> Feeling really old right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we flash over to Robin's apartment, picking up after the last episode. We see her and Barney in bed together, post-sex. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's it's real awkward. They, they're they both feeling some regret after this. And uh, they make a deal that this night never happened. Never happened. As Never. soon as her feet touch the floor, things go back to normal. Uh, Which I love how Barney does, like, the one more peek, saves the image in his the mind. B the B-peg file? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I love, as soon as she gets out of bed and gets the robe on, I like that Barney pulls probably one of the greatest lines of Barney history. Yes. Hey, Robin, guess who banged the uh, news report for Metro News 1? And yep. she fucking <laughs> she high fives him. She totally did. I was like, 
I can't. I, I can't believe she high fives him for that. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Can't leave him hanging, right? I mean, they do in later episodes. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I mean, you know, pound it. Give it what it deserves. Yeah. So, like, Robin really doesn't seem to have an issue acting like it never happened, you know? Nope. Obviously, we see Barney have an issue throughout the episode, but she seems to be able to turn it off real easily. So I was because I don't think she had as much of a connection to it at this point. That's true. We had seen before Barney's feelings cropping up. From, yeah. You know, and so it and does look, make sense. I mean, I'm not also going to lie. Like, sometimes, like, even when, like, minute feelings are involved in sex, like, it makes things complicated. But I, honestly, it the whole thing with Barney, it's more about how he feels about... Ted's thoughts on it. Yes. Honestly, it doesn't even really matter that it was Robin. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not so much about the sex in this instance. It's more about, like, Ted, you're right. But Robin doesn't have that problem. (laughs) No, Robin didn't give a shit. Robin was just like, oh, well. She's like, whatever. Fuck Ted. She's like, it's my pussy. I'll bang who I want. Rock on, you know? More power to you. Uh, So then we head over to the bar. Barney is freaking out about everything. You know, thinking the gang must know what's happening, Listen, even I though mean, they have no clue. What's the going lines on. that they put here, though, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, Barney, how does it feel? You know, mm-hmm. we're an elite group. And he's like, what? We're the only ones to hit it. Yeah, we're the only two at this table to hit it. I'm going to be hitting it soon. Yep. When I hit it, I'm going to have a clown. <laughs> you know, I don't like clowns usually, but for you, I'm there. Yep. Oh, it's such a good scene with some incredible writing done throughout it it's hilarious i mean it re- this entire episode has amazing writing done for it because yeah it makes you laugh because you're like barney has no clue that they're talking about ted turning 30 yeah. or the rest of them turning 30 and he's like what ah, yeah. <laughs> oh it's so good uh so then robin goes up to the bar uh, and barney follows her so he can talk to her about you know everything that happened <laughs> but again she acts like she has no idea what he's talking about no idea no idea which i thought was hilarious uh and then ted comes up and surprises barney and uh Dude, mentions that barney's gonna shit himself yeah man and then he mentions that marshall spilled the beans about a surprise party uh and tells barney to make sure to invite stella but we never see her in the episode no, and I thought that too. I was like, she's you know, mentioned not- a couple here and then later on, on at the party, but we never actually see her, which I thought was interesting. Maybe she was too busy with Lucy. I mean, no, because she goes to the party. Lily's like, Stella just arrived. Oh, yeah. But we just don't see her. Huh. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. We have not seen her since her first episode. No, we seen her during the two-minute date. That's the first episode. That's ten sessions. That's okay, the, but what we saw her before that, though, because... No. She, no? She's mentioned in the episode before it. Oh, we shit. see her, obviously, in ten sessions. Huh. And then she's mentioned here, but that's it until the, until the upcoming, the one that we do next. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. There, there are, there, there's a chunk... I talk about. I wonder if Sarah Chow had something else going on and just couldn't make an appearance. I'm gonna I'm gonna break the fourth wall for everybody. I, I've already prepped for the next episode, um, and we I we have a fourth I, wall. I talk about <laughs> and I talk about. I mention in my notes that there's a, a a four episode gap that she's just not in since the first time since she was there. Yeah. That's weird because gotta, then gotta the be. one after that she's uh, heavily <laughs> featured in too because it's the. Uh, it's the Abby episode with yeah. uh, Abby sacrifice or uh, Sacra. She gets she's in it more and more, obviously, um, from from the point of the next episode until the wedding. Like fair. M- most of those episodes, she's in only a couple of them. I think she's not in. That's fair. Yeah, and surprisingly, I was looking through everything. The wedding's like the ninth or tenth episode. Yeah, it happens it's early in the fucking season. It's real quick, so it'll be interesting to get to well, that. It's because it gives a good chance for Ted to have his downward spiral, 
yeah. go through his shit, and then by the end of <laughs> season th- uh, three or four, he can come back and be the Ted Mosby we all know and love again. It's true. Who's trying to find the one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so we go back to the apartment. Marshall is sitting on the couch eating. Uh, I think it was like popcorn and something else. I don't remember exactly what all he had. He's always eating, first off. Marshall always. always loves to eat. Uh, and playing some video games. And Barney calls him because he needs to hire him as his lawyer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which I love that Marshall's like, there had to be something. He's like, I'll pay you. But Marshall's like, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, then we head over to Barney's ar- uh, office. Marshall is already there, first off. When, when he gets there, which I was like, who let him in the office? I mean, I'm assuming GMB, all he had to do was be like, I'm here to, I'm assuming Barney had him like at reception already. Like I'm waiting for Marshall Erickson. Marshall showed up and probably knew his way to get up there. So probably they let him in. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Marshall's reading over this contract Dude, that he finds. I love the shit he says. I'm pretty sure that if Theus isn't executed properly, we're going to war. Like, Yeah, we're going to go to war with Portugal. It's like, what? What the? <laughs> Is this kind of like one of our first real, like, teases as to the kind of stuff that Barney does for a job? Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. he's obviously, he does some shady stuff. And his addiction to Sky Mall. Yes, Sky Mall, man. I, I have to say, man, I want the hot dog maker. I mean, those are real. Like, oh, I, I know they seen, are. Yeah, I've definitely seen those. I'm but just yeah, that, saying, I want one. That hot dog toaster thing. That, that was pretty dope. I would try that out. Uh, Sky <laughs> Just plop it right in there. I also Ding. love the paper shredder. Yes. It can, just, it can demolish a bike. 17 seconds. <laughs> uh, Barney uh, is going to tell Marshall a secret that he has. But Marshall doesn't want to hear it. He's nope. like, nope, nope, I can't. I can't, la, 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 not going to do it. But uh, he does tell him this secret that he uh, <laughs> slept with Robin. Marshall needs a moment. Yep. Yes, he but, does. Uh, but I love how Barney's like, and you can't tell anybody. He's like, well, I've got to tell Lily. He's like, you can't. Lawyer privilege is like it's the confidentiality thing, and I'm like fucking smart. And then the the hot dog toaster yeah. dings, ding. <laughs> and then I love that they cut to commercial, and when they come back, Marshall's eating the hot dog, he's eating the hot dog, and he's like, "How are you?" He's like, "Uh, and how's the hot dog? It's helping. It's helping. Like, it's helping." <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's got like, a little plate and like a condiment uh, tree and everything, and I'm just <laughs> like, "God damn." Uh, so Barney tells Marshall that he needs him to comb through the bro code. Which see if this is can... the first time we see the bro code in book form. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and he goes through some of the some of the articles of the bro code, which I, I wrote. Mm-hmm. Th- I wrote. I wrote down the ones that he uh, that he went through, which I thought were pretty cool. Have you ever uh, seen the physical book? The ones like sold at Spencer's. I mean, not in person. I, I, online, I've seen like pictures of it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I've thought about getting one. Yeah, I've thought about it. I know they have they have the bro code, and then there's um, there's another. What's the other one? Uh, I don't know. He's got another. There's another one. Another book. Oh no and shit! I, and now I can't remember what it is. But yeah, there's there's another book out there. Um, the uh, of of his stuff. Oh, the play. No, yeah, is it the playbook? I mean, it might be the playbook. It might be. I think. I think it might be the playbook. Um, which I would get both of those. Hell just, yeah! It'd be awesome to see. Uh, so yeah, we have Article One: Bros before hoes. Classic. Simple. Yeah, simple. yeah. Article Thirty Four: Bros cannot make eye contact during a devil's three-way. That comes back up. It, by does. The way, it does, and I, I love, love that. Which I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, Article Eighty Nine: The mom of a bro is always off limits, but the stepmom of a bro is fair game if she initiates it or is wearing at least one article of leopard print clothing. Fair. Now, uh, I thought this was uh, interesting because this article is brought up again later on in uh, by Ted in the season nine episode, The Broken Code. But it's he states that it's Article One Hundred Four. Ooh, he misquotes the Bro Code. Yeah, something. They're, I mean, I get that though because <laughs> Ted's not gonna to Barney. It's the Bible. That's to true. To Ted, it's it's a book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even though uh, Ted honors a lot of it, you know. And I mean, Barney breaks that 
that article. He does. You know that well, he does. In all fairness, though, let me humbly apologize for also breaking the bro code article 84. 89. 89. I mean, yeah, I mean, at least you didn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, true. <laughs> Now we're gonna get we're gonna get questions. Here. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll put it this way: you want to know the story? Subscribe to Patreon, and we'll tell the story. Yeah, man, we'll do a whole video. John can doesn't just even have to be story. doesn't even have to be the top tier. Just simply subscribe, and we'll tell the story. <laughs> uh, so then Barney goes on a fake history lesson about the birth of the Bro Code, seventeen seventy six. Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, they decide they need to have a written down book of of, of these bro codes, these codes yep. for being a bro. Because Franklin had called dibs and George Washington cucked him. He did, man. Cucked him hard. Uh, and so then out steps Barnabas Stinson. And he's going to take on that task of uh, so writing this book. When this got said, because this is the first time we ever hear reference to Barnabas Stinson which I know comes up a few more times throughout the series. It got me thinking, you think Barney's real name might actually be Barnabas and not Barney? I mean, I've never thought about that, but that would be kind of awesome if it was. Because, I mean, like I said, it's mentioned a few times by as Barnabas. Yeah. And I'm like, that would be, a, I, I could do that as a name and then yeah. just call my kid Barney. I'd be happy with that. Barnabas. Yeah, I dig it. From now on, in my own head, Canon, his name is now Barnabas. Fair. Yeah, that's just the way it I'm is. I'm gonna Google it really quick. <laughs> uh, I really want to know. Keep yeah. talking though. So, uh, but you know, Barney feels guilt, you know, for breaking the bro code. You know, the the no sex with a bro's ex code, and uh, he wants Marshall's help. You know, and uh, you know this this pretty much is is the crux of the whole thing. You know, he oh he's, yeah, he's so guilty about it all that he needs. He needs some sort of so uh, you know uh, some sort of way to get out of all that guilt. You know? Yeah, he wants Marshall to try to find some loophole that Ted also has violated the bro code somewhere. Yeah. Uh, we then head over to Lily's classroom, where they have a farmer visiting, who has brought a goat. It is Barnabas. Is it? It is Barnabas Stinson. Nice. I wonder so, if they if they do actually say it somewhere in the uh, in the in the show. Then I don't know because it has to be confirmed then somewhere if that's the case. Later on, I'll tweet Carter and Craig. There you go. Uh, so this farmer, Farmer Frank, is obviously drunk, <laughs> dude, on cough syrup. Yeah, <laughs> out of everything, and uh, tells the kids that the goat is going to be butchered. Apparently, goes dude. into real detail with it. I was going to say he goes into extreme details on Lily's account. And it's like, poor kids, like, I can't yeah. imagine being that age and having somebody be like, yeah, we're going to fucking, like, slit its neck and drain its blood, and yeah. we're going to, like, do this and this and this. And I mean, like, my yeah. kid knows where meat comes from, but I'm not going to, like, go into detail. Like, that's unnecessary detail. I was going to say, there are some things you tell kids, like, it's okay to explain to them, like, like the death of something. Oh, but to yeah, go yeah. into extreme details and be like, yeah, we're going to like. I'm like, yes, bacon comes from a pig. Yes. It's but like, I'm not going to tell you how they butcher a pig. Like, right? that's just, that's just, that's, oh, man. <laughs> it's like, I don't understand why Lily didn't like stop this guy. And I wondered that right too. away. Like, I was yeah. like, why didn't Lily step in as the teacher and try to stop him from ruining those kids? Yeah, man. It's like, you know, like, one oh, of those whoa, kids went God. home crying to their parents and was like, Mommy, they were going to kill the goat. And Miss Aldrin saved it. Yeah. Yeah, she does, man. She buys the goat and brings it home huh. in like a so taxi or something. That's my next question to you. First off, he's counting like $100 bills. Yeah. Who carries that amount of money with them? And how much do you think she actually paid for that goat? Where'd she get the money from? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I thought the whole thing was like Marshall's out of a job and she's just a teacher. Like they're pretty, they're pretty broke at the moment. Right. So where'd she get the money to be buying? Now, granted, let's pay attention over the next, next year of the, you know, the next season. Cause technically this doesn't happen for another year. Oh, that's right. You know, so let's see, because uh, I'm pretty sure 
Marshall's work in GMB by that time. I believe you're right. So, like, maybe but they do still, that though, movie. But I don't... <clears throat> so maybe that was just, like, a like a clue to to them being in a better position. In maybe. Life. I don't know. Uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to dog ear this and come back to that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, future Ted teases that the goat did something horrible uh, in, in the bathroom, <laughs> which... You know, obviously, eventually, we will see all of the, the fun stuff of the goat. Listen, I just <laughs> have to say that I love that, like, Lily brings it home. She's trying to explain to Ted, like, oh, well, goat's going to be here for a day or so because, you know, my aunt, her aunt can't come to get it until the next day. Yeah. It shits on the floor. Oh, we haven't gotten there yet. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, that that I have a whole yeah, I have a whole thing about that. Fair enough. <laughs> Cuz I got a couple of things I got to say too cuz it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh Oh, actually no, that is where we are. I was uh, I, was, I, thought I wasn't so. look, Yeah, I wasn't looking in the right spot. Yes, yeah, cuz Robin comes in. Yeah. Uh and instantly spots this thing and she's like Hey, what's her goat turd on the floor? Yeah, and I, like Ted's like, how'd you know it's a goat turd? And she's like, you know. Well, it was either that or a muskox turd. And I was like, well, who would have a muskox in here? Right? And it makes me laugh because Ted's like dumbfounded by this. Yeah. Robin steps aside. Marshall comes in in his like tizzy. He's freaking he out. He also points out that he's it's like, a goat turd. Oh, hey, goat turd. And then he just keeps, it's just like. Well, but it's the way he says it, because he's like, oh, goat turd, is that new? Ah, yeah, is that and new? goes into the kitchen. And Ted's like, how does everybody know it's a goat turd? Yeah. And I realize this is one of the first instances we get where they kind of do a comparison between Marshall and Robin. Robin, yep. Because it's, you know, Robin and Marshall have that, the like... Minnesota-Canadian connection. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And I yep. was like, this is one of those first glimpses we get... Where they have a very paralleled <clears throat> existence. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, it's fantastic. fucking bravo. I'm like, that is a great little seedling to have planted right there. Mm-hmm. Because it it bridges so much later on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it was very well done. I, was, I, I love that. Because if it was anybody other than the two of them... It just wouldn't. It wouldn't make that much sense. <laughs> exactly, and that's what I'm saying. I was like, "There's no way." If like Barney had walked in and been like, "Oh, goat turd," yeah. I wouldn't have believed him because I wouldn't even feel like Barney would know what a real life goat looked like. It's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, Marshall right. growing up in Minnesota, which is primarily like, you know, it's it's Midwestern U.S. It's I wouldn't say it's country setting, but it's definitely more country esque. Yeah. And Canada, I mean, it's Canada. It is Canada. I mean, they have fucking colorful play money. (laughs) It's something called a loony. And a toonie. And a toonie. Yeah, don't want to forget that one. I mean, I'm not (laughs) insulting Canadians by any means. I'm just saying. I mean, they are afraid of the dark. (laughs) (laughs) On behalf of uh, last call at McLaren's, I apologize for my co-host, in his his this does not reflect the personal opinions of last call hey man you wouldn't have to apologize if they just wouldn't be afraid of the dark what remember that time we got stopped in customs on the canadian side <laughs> and i pointed out the room we were sitting in didn't have light switches yep <laughs> again you want to hear the story subscribe to patreon i'll tell the story <laughs> oh man <laughs> that's how we I was get eyeing customs in a locked room you'll never know yeah unless you subscribe uh so marshall heads into the kitchen and robin you know to, like beelines it right to him confronts oh, him right to him and uh and tells marshall is like you can't say a word to ted about this it's the first instance since it happened obviously of her f- admitting it yeah admitting it and, and seeming to like have any sort of worry about yeah. it, about the situation I Obviously. love that poor Marshall is so shaken that he's like shaking his beer. Yes. And Mar- I love that Robin's like, do not open that while I'm in the splash zone. Because that comes back later. Oh, yeah. Which I love that they didn't forget that. Uh, so then we head back over to Barney's office. Marshall tells him that, you know, he, there's no loophole. I can't find anything. Uh, and so instead, he suggests uh, that, you know, maybe Ted has broken you know, but Barney suggests this that maybe Ted has broken the code, but Marshall's already looked into that man. 
And he hasn't. Um, he hasn't. We, in fact, he's fucking up Elvis and way more. He has. If we go through a few more uh, articles, which uh, uh, I thought was good. We have Article 87. A bro shale at all times. Say yes. And we get this uh, the avalanche story. Where uh, Ted is apparently a pre-op transsexual nightclub singer who uh, used to be a member of, a, of the Russian mob. But I, I love that Ted also knows basic Russian. Yes, he knows he knows some Russian and he knows sign language. You know what I mean? He, he knows a lot of stuff. Um, I remember a while back we talked about how um, they put way too many trans jokes in this you know show you know i understand it was it was a time but this was one i had totally forgotten about because i was trying to remember all the instances I, I remember that we were trying to count them up back then and this was one that i had completely forgotten about honestly it's such a quick brush over that yeah is. it was one that i had forgotten about as well yeah and i was like oh shit i was like that wouldn't fucking go today but it, it what i find interesting is like when we talked about it you know we had we had talked about how it always came from Ted, so it makes Ted look like he's like transphobic, right? This one comes from Barney, but he's saying it knowing that it's gonna like upset Ted. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. it still fits into that that character bio of kind of yep. like Ted that that Barney would know that that's it's, the kind of thing that would upset him. That it's like a small trigger. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and I thought works. about that too because I'm like, man, Ted Kid's really like, like you see his face where she's like, oh, and you're a uh, uh, the however it gets said, the post trans whatever, and I'm like, oh, Ted's all like, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, I, so I thought that was interesting. Like, I don't know if any of that was ever done on purpose, like to to specifically point all of it to, at Ted or not. I don't know. But, that would be something cool to uh, shoot at uh, Carter and yeah. Brett. All the ones that I can remember happening were all pointed at Ted. Yeah, so, usually. Yeah. Uh, so then we also have Article Twenty Nine: A bro will, in a timely manner, alert his bro to the existence of a <laughs> girl calf fight. Yeah. 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 Fucking, I love too like the scene because he's on the phone and like Barney's like, bam. He's there. yeah. He's there. Is Ted still on the phone? <laughs> Still on the like, like oh, you're oh good. man, <laughs> kind of uh, reminds me of when you talk to a specific person on the phone that I know, and you'll put your phone down and like not even have the conversation. You just <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is true. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we have uh, Article Fifty Three: A bro will, whenever possible, provide his bro with protection. Listen, this was my favorite scene of same. all of the article ones that they did. Same. It was fucking hilarious. I love that he's just massaging the girl, and you see the little claw come up into the window with, like, a little three-strip of condoms. Yep. And then he's like, she's like, oh, if only we had some wine. Byron's like, yeah, if we only had some wine, and the little claw comes back in. Yep. He's like, put, it's like a 20 in it, and I'm like, God. <laughs> it was awesome. And it's like, yeah, man, that's true bro right there. I mean, that is but true then, bro. It's it, it makes me it, it lets you know that Barney's apartment must be on the first floor then. But it's not though, because we've seen later on where like he's up a few stories. Unless he's at like the girl's house. That could have been. Because that didn't why like is, Barney's apartment anyway. But then why is Ted there? Unless unless he like texted Ted like, yo, bring me some con like, that I that's mean, the only thing. Here's the address, bring me some condoms. Could have. You know what I mean? Um, window by the east. I don't know. You know, <laughs> you'll see an open window, right? <laughs> that's the only other thing I could think that that's uh, that's probably actually more what happened. Um, but either way, I love that scene. It's just listen. I'll you don't, even, like you don't even see Ted. You just see the claw. That's all. Is as much as Ted can be a presumptuous, bad closing dickhole and trans transphobe apparently. Um. Yeah. He's a really good wingman. Yeah. Like, he's always there for Marshall and Barney and Robin, where he'll put his, their needs before his. Yeah. <clears throat> like, we see it a bunch of times throughout the show where, like, he goes above and beyond to help them at all times, especially when it comes to Robin. Yeah. Like, we see that a lot around the time of her wedding where, like, he does, like, 
oh, he goes for the locket and like he's got to like find the locket and shit. Yeah. But as much as he can be like a shit person sometimes, he's a really good dude. It's true. So Marshall tells him, uh, you know, the reason that he's feeling guilty is because he knows what he did was wrong and he needs to tell Ted. Oh, yeah. So we flash over to the party. That's the the surprise party. And uh, the goat is there with a party hat on. With a party hat on. <laughs> Which I love. Uh, and Stella has arrived. Okay, so here's here's my thing. Now that I think about it, because we just talked about this. Maybe Stella wasn't at his at this party. Or maybe he was. Or maybe he's because... When... If the goat is there, right? It means it's the 31st. But I'm pretty sure they're broken up before that. I'm pretty sure as well. You know what I mean? So obviously, as this this, uh, unreliable narrator, he's merging this party story by adding the goat to it. That's fair. Even though the goat's not there. But yeah, uh, she says, you know, Stella has arrived, but we, again, don't see her. It would have been a perfect opportunity for her to just kind of make a cameo. Oh, yeah. We don't. Uh, And future Ted teases a little bit more about the goat, you know, he every so often he teases the goat but he's like no we'll get to that you know I, not yet not yet um he's always keeps putting it off throughout the episode which should i feel like should have told all of us that something's up because <laughs> he never wants to say anything yet you know he keeps well he doesn't fully realize it though until the end no 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 i'm talking about like as the audience oh yeah we should have known that something was up with yeah. you know, with this goat story. It, it's the mis- classic misdirect. Yeah, man. It Watch really, the rest really, of the episode because we're going to talk about the goat last. And then, yeah. You know, yeah. they zigged us. Yeah, because there's a lot with the goat when we finally do see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot. I have uh, to say, not to, not to go that far ahead, but it is one of my favorite fight scenes in the show. Yes, it's so good. Because it's just so over Because... You know, the show is told from Ted's um, psyche. Like, it's it's future Ted telling the story. Yeah. So, obviously, the goat got the upper hand on Ted. It probably was slightly over-exaggerated, but that was a very traumatic experience for Ted, obviously. And yes. he tells the story how he was, like, mercilessly beat up by this fucking goat. Yep. Missy the goat just took it to him, man. Now, let me, let me tell you, as a kid who grew up with, like, farm animals around, because my aunt had goats and cows and sheep and chickens, goats can be terrifying. Oh, I, like, I, I bet. Like, baby goats are adorable, because they're so fucking tiny, and if you give them your pinky, they'll suck on your pinky like it's a, a bottle. Um... But you piss a goat off, man. They will fucking charge you, and they will ram you. Like, oh yeah, they, they have can no be nasty qualms. little fuckers. They have no qualms with that, man. Oh no, nah, no, thank you. <laughs> and, and don't ever run into chicken thinking the chicken's gonna run the other way because that chicken will fucking fight back. Yeah, but you know what, man? Just punt that chicken. <laughs> I, you don't think that when all of a sudden its wings are out and its fucking claws are coming right at your face? <laughs> I mean. I'm gonna I'm gonna punt that thing. It is going to become a chicken nugget soon. <laughs> I mean, sure. That's my next twenty piece right there. Or ch- <laughs> I was gonna say it could be chicken wings. Or that, yeah, you know. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Barney picks up Ted uh, in a limo. You know, he's supposed to be taking him over to the party. Supposed to be. He's supposed to be, but he's not. He decides he's gonna take him to Vegas. Vegas. Now, I uh, I looked into this. New York City to Las Vegas is a 38-hour nonstop drive. Damn. Yeah. So, like, now, it's not like they would even be there on his birthday. Well, I love that. Unless we get... they were going to go drive to the airport and fly there. Oh, that could be. I love, though, we get a surprise appearance here by Ranjit. Yes, Ranjit. I love it. Because I love that, like, he clearly, like, he rolls down the window and he's like, you slept with Robin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Ted, Ted already knew. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he already knew. Because um, Barney, was he was going to tell him. Listen, I have to say, this conversation is fucking hilarious. Because it's it's not hilarious at start. Because Ted's like, yeah, I knew. Yeah. And Barney's like, okay, well, let's make it even. You can hit me. 
but don't oh, hit me yeah. in the face. Yeah. And I'm like, that's fair. I wouldn't want to get punched in the face either, but you can hit me. And he punches him, and he's like, who punches somebody in the groin? Yeah, I mean, you're, like, skipping, you're skipping way ahead uh, with that, because that actually, there's stuff in between all of that even. Um, that I have, and I have notes for all this. So yeah, but Fair we'll enough. get to we'll get to that. Uh, so you you mentioned Ranji yelling at Barney, right? He he yells at him in another language. Okay, which uh, I was as I was doing my research, found out uh, that he's actually yelling in Persian, Ooh. which is different because Ranji is supposed to be from Bangladesh, right? Oh, yeah. is, so it's a different language. But the actor is from Iran. Where they speak Persian, oh, okay. So, like that's Which just like his sense. his native tongue, and uh, apparently, roughly translated, what he says is, uh, "Inhuman traitor, non friend. If she was my ex girlfriend, I would put my hands around your neck." <laughs> wow, go on, Jeet. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, okay, a lot like that. <laughs> uh, Barney asks Ted, you know how how do you know? Like, how could you already know? And we get a flashback to the apartment right after Robin confronted Marshall in the kitchen. We hear the him open the beer yep. and it explodes everywhere and he comes out, uh, which I was like, that's great. I love that they 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 stop right before and they pick up right oh, when yeah. it happens. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then Ted shows her a picture from their trip to Vermont. And he's like, you know, uh, I found this picture of us, you know, when we, when we took our trip. And then she just blurts it out. She couldn't hold on to it any longer. Can you blame her, though? No, I mean, she has more of a conscience, I think, you know, obviously, than, than Barney. Barney's willing to just try to skirt around it, find, like, a loophole, obviously, as we're, you know, he wants to put it on Ted instead of on himself, you know? Yeah. That's what he's trying to do, but uh, Ted is understanding with her and forgives her. Obviously not, not that way with Barney. Which... Um, I understand it a little bit because, like, it's a 50 50 thing, but, like, I don't know. I mean, we I learn still... later on why he's not mad with Robin. Yeah. And I think he's more mad at Barney because he's supposed to be his friend. You know, he's supposed to be his bro. Yeah. And I think that's more about what it is. You know? I mean, we've never had this instance, but I mean, I, I feel like it would be the same for us. Yeah, I would think so. You know, and especially with him hiding it for so yeah. long, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and that's, that's the thing. Like, if it. you're going to do something like that, at least be honest. Yeah. Like, shit happens. Like, okay, so you banged Robin. Like, okay. Just yeah. like, be real about it. Yeah. Uh, so we head back over to the roof. Uh, Lily asks Marshall if she can keep the goat. <laughs> it's like, no, come on. No. Uh, and then Lily reveals that Marshall told her about Robin and Barney. And this is where we get the whole thing with, with Lily, you know, asking about, you know, how it was. And it's like, is he all that's smooth hilarious. down there? <laughs> She's got so many questions about it too. Yeah. Did he tie you up? Did you tie him up? <laughs> yeah. I love the, it's all smooth down there. Is it Actually, all smooth down there? You know what I just realized? We skipped something that I thought was an amazing dark joke. Mm. But so back when uh, Barney first calls Marshall into his office, and he's talking about, like, the legality. Marshall's like, wait, Robin does know you had sex with her, right? Yeah. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, they made a fucking rape joke. Yeah, and it, it, it shows you how little they think of Barney. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they, at least Marshall, feels like that's a possibility. Yeah, and I was, because when he said it, I was like, shit i'm like wow i'm like they really just made that fucking joke yeah and at the time this was like cbs television like oh yeah i'm it's like not, it's I, not like they're on hulu like now no yeah i'm like fuck man i'm like and i get like you we've said this multiple times this is 2006 2007 2008, 2008. Yeah, 2008. so i mean like this is a different time but that's still a fucking rape joke yeah yeah, no, it is, <laughs> but it's not making a joke about like like making fun of the act of it. It's more pointing out that this character is the kind of character that probably would. 
I mean, I you know? I get that. That's still just really yeah. I was like, fuck. Yeah, they went uh, there. They did go there, but in the same episode, they did a trans joke. You know. I mean, you're not wrong. That's fair. <laughs> Like they're just doubling down over here. I just I had to go back to that because I like, I couldn't believe that that joke flew in like oh eight. Yeah, I think as far I think it's it is a lot tamer than it could have been. I think that's why. Fair. I really do. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so she you know we get back. To, oh yeah, I wanted to say this about the the whole smooth down hit there thing. She's seen Barty naked. The painting. Oh yeah. The painting's yeah. already happened at this point. Yeah. Now, the only thing I could think of is maybe she blocked all that out of her mind. I mean, she was trying not to pay attention when she was doing that. Yeah. And true. if I'm not mistaken, she did something to the painting down there. Like She just didn't paint his junk. She left him like oh, a Oh, yeah. 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 She. she so she, she probably didn't look down there. Maybe. I mean, I feel like it would be difficult to not see just in I general. Mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's just right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even she's got peripheral vision, you know. She I mean? does. She's going to see it. <laughs> I think if anything, she probably just blocked it out. Probably. Uh, but yeah, then we then we go back to the limo. This is where the whole thing, you know, Ted's pissed. He's yelling, you know, and he demands that Barney tell him how it happened. <laughs> and uh, this is where Ranjit's like, <laughs> this is where he tells him to hit him. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. Hey, hit him, Ted, hit him. Is is this this part where he also makes the mom joke? My mom will be in town next month if you want to bang her. Yeah, because that's when uh, as he's yelling. Yeah, that's that's what he says. I'm like, damn man. <laughs> and but he and punches pa- him in the fucking groin. Yeah, good. Barney gives him a free shot. He's like anywhere but the face, <laughs> you know. And he just clocks him right in the nuts. Now, John, according to the bro code, Article Thirty Eight. A bro should never punch another bro in the groin. Ooh. Even in a fight to the death. However, okay, some online have justified this because saying that in Ted's head, they were no longer bros. Like, even though he had on that though. He hadn't he, he hadn't said it yet, because he's about to say, it, but he hadn't said it yet. That they weren't bros, so it wouldn't apply to him anymore. Beyond that, Barney gave him the open door for it. That was the other thing that people uh, had said was that he had been given verbal permission. Yeah. But he could have hit him anywhere. Just not. I mean, he, he didn't have to hit him. You know what I mean? So if he was going to follow the, the code, he could have hit him anywhere other than the face and the groin. You realize this means you have violated the bro code. Yeah, it happens. You not only hit me in the balls. <laughs> You hit me in the balls with a flaming kendo stick. You know what? I don't think we can count wrestling stuff, no, John. No, Heck no, because <laughs> I also hit you in the groin with a cookie sheet. You did. You <laughs> fought. The, you violated on multiple occasions. <laughs> and folks, if you want to hear those stories, head on over to Patreon.com/slash Last Call H-I-M-Y-M. <laughs> I demand an apology via a cookie. Well, the next time I see you, give you cookie, got a cookie. Sure. <laughs> uh, so the, this is where Ted ends their friendship, ends yeah. you know, ends them being bros. Uh, he has Ron Jeet stop the cab, and he gets out and he leaves. Yep, he just leaves Barney there. Uh, Ted goes home. He heads up 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 to the roof for the party, while Barney sits in the limo by himself, uh, and you know, thinking about everything that he did. And then the episode ends with future Ted continuing the story about the goat, but realizes that the goat didn't happen until his 31st birthday. Yeah. And that's I love the how he the makes story. the Robin comment. He's like, you know, oh, Robin didn't live here on my 30th birthday. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That was my 31st birthday. And that gives us some force. It's like, wait, Robin's going to be living there? Yeah. Because you know? it kind of so. makes you wonder, like, how is she living there? And, like, they're going to have a full apartment. Yeah. But all that breaks down next season. That's true. Join us for season <clears throat> four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, that is all of season three, episode 17, The Goat. John, what are your overall thoughts on this episode? I, I mean, I love this episode. This is uh, it's a fun little episode. Mm-hmm. You got so much shit going on all at once, you know, with uh, 
the rules and trying to figure out the bro code and the goat. And, you know, you got everything going on with Lily and you got shit going on with Marshall. I love the Sky Mall appearance. Because, yes. honestly, like I said, the paper <laughs> shredder and the, the hot dog cooker, those are fucking amazing little things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, I love that Ranjit is back. Yes. Yeah, you gotta love. You gotta always love a good uh, appearance by Ranji. I do. I mean, he's always one of my favorite little cameos. Like, cause like especially like later on, cause when he shows up, he'll be like, "Hello, hello." Yeah, I I really enjoy this this one quite a bit. Um, and it sets up for some really good stuff. You know, it has a lot of foreshadowing throughout the the episode. A lot of you know, cause a lot of stuff happens in season four. Bro, a lot of like, stuff happens. It's it's four. a wild season. Um, so I'm excited to to get into that as well. Although, if I'm not mistaken, we don't get any Robin Sparkles in season four. I don't think so, because the next one would be uh, Glitter. It's Jessica Glitter. Yeah, so. Which I don't think happens until like season six or seven. Is it that far down the road? I Well, because remember, there's also the, the Robin Dagger. Well, so I don't think it's, it's quite. Lily's, Lily's pregnant when they go to see yeah. Jessica. Okay. So it's got to at least be like seven or eight. No, it wouldn't be seven or eight because there's the whole Robin Daggers thing. It comes after. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'd say probably like six. Oh, I'd say that. I'd say probably if anything, it's probably. There's no way it's that late. There's no way it's eight because the Daggers one isn't in nine. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't remember. Hold on. Yeah. So. Jessica Glitter. <laughs> the episode. Season is- six. Yeah, six. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was I was right though. It's later season. Yeah. Season yeah, yeah. six, episode nine. Okay. Cool. And guess yeah. who the writer of that episode is? Who? Courtney Kang. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because it's a it's a Robin Sparkles episode. See, that was a yeah. twist. I wanted to see if you remembered. I caught I was, you. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah. All right, folks. So now that we've talked about the episode, it is that time. It is time for Barney's blog. Suit up, bitches! Yeah, that's right. All right, so for this one, we have Barney's blog. It's just titled The Bro Code. Fair. Okay. And it goes, whether we know it or not, each of us uh, lead our lives by an internalized code of conduct. Some call it mortality. Others call it religion. I call it The Bro Code. Years ago, I set forth to compile and articulate the unspoken mores that exist between and among bros the world over, while not intending. Admits that it wasn't created in 1776. Yeah, 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 yeah. He uh, he says he did it here, while not intending to write (laughs) a guide to being a bro. If men should treat it as such and choose to pass the compendium of knowledge from generation to generation, I have little doubt it would bring a tear to my eye. But not out of it. That would be a violation of Article 77. A bro never cries. Well, I've broken that rule. <laughs> the bro code is a living document. Manifest, uh, manifest in its 83 amendments. Uh, and which there, there's a lot more. At least because here he says 83 amendments. First off, 83. That's his number. Yeah, it is his number. But like he calls them articles throughout it and there's definitely more than that because he literally says 86 earlier or 89 or whatever earlier in the episode but anyways uh and as such it's not yet publicly available in an unabridged volume the original document is housed in a non-disclosed location two stories beneath sea level in a vacuum sealed bulletproof chamber uh reprinted here is a sampling of some uh of her articles uh learn live enjoy and he, and he goes through uh, a few he's got three of them on here uh, of his articles he's got article 26 a bro will in a timely manner alert his bro of the existence of a girl fight That's obviously he in the he, yeah he mentions that one uh a, and it says a bro must never hesitate before communicating the possibility of fisticuffs between two humans of the female variety henceforth girl fight in an effort to make possible and probable that another bro or bros could partake in observation. A timely manner is open to interpretation based on that initial bro's viewing <coughs> and, and processing of the potential feminine uh, conf- conflag- conflagration. 
Said bro must use any and all methods of media uh, distribution to his disposal, including but not limited to telecommunications, elbow nudging, fiber optics, the Brony Express, and postcards. Okay. (laughs) Which, I mean, I don't think a postcard is going to do you any good at that point. No, it'll be over by the time you get it. Oh, yeah. Uh, If an informed bro is unable to witness the girl fight firsthand, the the spotter bro is responsible for documenting and relating details of the girl fight via pictures, video, or barring any other reasonable method, interpretive dance, and or pantomime. Yeah. Uh, tabling bro uh, obligations to witness an XX chromosomal scuffle is not only condoned, but encouraged, and in some cases required. Please refer to the bro obligation rubric as uh, elucidated in Amendment 83, the really hot sister and other hump trumps. Huh. And then uh, when it said video earlier, there was a little asterisk and it says, see the Broder film. Apparently there's some film. Uh, so then we have Article 53. A bro will, whenever possible, provide his bro with protection, which obviously yeah. we talked about that one. In the event that one bro finds himself lacking the necessary prophylactic accoutrements needed to complete the act of coitus in a safe and effective manner, he is in the right to expect his bro will use all measures <coughs> within and without his means to provide the aforementioned prophylactic in a timely yet discreet fashion. When a bro signals his need using previously agreed upon code words and or body signage, it is understood that this bro will discontinue all present activity, excepting the fact, uh, excepting the act of coitus itself, whereby which bro vows to finish as quickly as possible. So if you're in the middle of sex, you've got to finish and then you go and do your do your duty as a bro. So I realize we see this one like one other time, but in a slightly different sense. Do we? Ted sleeping, he wakes up and Barney's like crouched next to his bed and he's like, Ted, where are your condoms? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, and it says, in order to respond with a uh, panoply of options at bro in needs location, a bro must patronize the most rapid method of transportation available while endeavoring to assist his bro. In no instance may a two wheeled bicycle be used. As this is not only humiliating, but also potentially harmful to the uh, perineum, a zone of tissue perilously adjacent and noted uh, to noted sexual organs, also known as the taint, John. It's the taint. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, in the event that a state, federal, international, or galactic law is breached d- due to recklessness, unacceptable levels of speed, and or the hijacking of an airborne vehicle, <laughs> it, it is understood that the primary bro will shoulder any associated legal fees or fines. However, any costs or damages <clears throat> incurred from the use of public transportation are the responsibility of the secondary bro alone, as this is an instance of quid pro bro. Okay. Upon, uh, upon arrival at the primary bro's location, the secondary bro must exercise complete discretion so as not to disrupt the primary bro's flow. It is understood that bro will engage in all training necessary to achieve this objective, including at minimum a five-month ninjutsu curriculum mastering the twin arts of stealth and secrecy. This has, yeah. a, a, has an asterisk that we'll see at the bottom where it says, uh, see Appendix E, list of approved ninja training facilities and dojos. <laughs> which... I, I have to wonder if these like appendixes are in the the printed one that you can buy at the store. Oh shit! You know I what I mean. Doubt, I wouldn't doubt it. I would hope so. Uh, so then it says, once the primary bro has been supplied with the necessary prophylactics, the bro seizure is deemed complete upon exchange of the traditional, though in this case silent high five. Uh, tacit in this unspoken ritual is the understanding that said episode will never be spoken of again unless it's part of an awesome story. Uh, and then it says, um, oh, and th- there was another asterisk that I missed about the bicycle, where it says, uh, unless a bicycle is the only form of transportation in some Cambodian villages. Huh. So apparently if you're in you know, a, a Cambodian village, you can, you can take a two-wheel bike at that point. 
And then the last one he does is Article 89, a bro may never pursue the mom of another bro. Be it here, uh, be it here resolved that at no point is it permissible for one bro to engage in carnal delicacies with another bro's mother. It is, however, allowed and encouraged for one bro to graphically suggest to a bro the aesthetic feats uh, and Amelia and or machinery utilized during a fictional encounter with his mom. Uh, note, it is customary for a bro to avoid such uh, brocularity uh, if the bro's mom is a nine or higher for fear of op- opedial inducement. You know, like Oedipus, you know, the oh, okay. later on thing. Uh, should a bro discover his bro is in fact adopted, he is free to pursue his bro's adoptive mother, but only after first corroborating, corroborating non-biological parentage through notarized birth certificates, <laughs> hospital Damn. records, or comparative dioxyribonucleic acid gel electrophoresis. <laughs> Whichever is easiest. <laughs> Wow. Uh, since the adopted bro cannot legitimately claim to have shared a canal with his bro, Article 89 expressly prohibits the adopted bro from invoking the sloppy second clause as any related filings uh, in the International Court of Bros. Though the mom of a bro is always off limits, the stepmom of a bro is allowed if she initiates <coughs> and or is wearing at least one article of leopard print clothing if she looks good in it. And that's it. That's that's the that's what we got here. That is fucking ridiculous, but amazing. They, they did actually put a, a picture. I'd forgotten to to save it, but I can uh, I can add it in post. Um, and it's 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 a it's it's of the bro code opened up. So you got two pages of it, and it's articles fifty six through sixty eight. And nice. so you, you can see all of those. I'll share it to you after, so you can at least take a look at it. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff here, like uh, a bro shall never reveal the score of a sporting event to another bro until the bro has th- uh, thrice confirmed it's cool. That's kind of funny because we'll see that again during the Super Bowl. Yep. Uh, let's see, there's a one bro makes a solo attack, a second bro provides a crutch, a third bro rounds out the pack, but a fourth bro is is one too much. Shit, we've never actually seen that one. <laughs> I feel like kind of with the Doug thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think a little bit of that was kind of there because he had uh, Barney, Ted, and Doug as the three, you know? Yeah. So, and then uh, a bro shall honor thy thy father or mother was one that was in there. And uh, I'll do one more. Let's see. A bro must always reciprocate a round of drinks among bros with the proviso that no existing wager supersedes the purchase and exchange of spirits. Nice. So what I thought was sad, though, about this, it ends at 68. It's like, I want to know what's Article 69. Like, come Ah. on. Like, uh, it's got to be good. Just just for (laughs) just for purposes, I'm going to see if I can Google it real quick. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it's got to be it's got to be something good, right? I mean, uh, it, we'll see. I would hope so. <laughs> uh, how I met your mother, bro. Code. Article sixty-nine. Article maybe. sixty-nine. I hope it's something really good. I really do. Is that really all it is? Well, let's hear it. It's literally just duh. Just duh. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. That's fair. So that's Article 69, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Duh. Ah, oh, damn. All right, folks. Well, that is uh, this episode of uh, Last Call at McLaren's, you know, for Season 3, Episode 17, The Goat. Uh, John, if you don't have anything left for why don't you uh, let the folks know where they can find you? Listen, peeps. It's simple. You know it. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Uh, you want to find me? Hop on over to Twitter, simply saying J1. You can check out my podcast. You can check out my blog. If you want to find me on Facebook? I'm there as well. Never a hard person to find, so let's do it. It's true. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Movie Blog Merc. That is the uh, Twitter page for my site, Merc of the Movie Blog. 
Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, you're watching it on the Merkman Movie Blog YouTube channel. So be sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, click that little bell, wherever the fuck it is on the screen. And if you're using your mobile device, don't forget to click that little bell and set your notifications so you can get notified anytime we drop new content. Boom, boom, boom. You got it. Uh, and if you are listening on podcast form, head over to uh, anchor.fm slash last call, H-I-M-Y-M, where you can leave us a voice message there. We'd love to hear from you. Um, obviously, if you're on you know, any of the other podcasts, you know, you, whatever they got for rating systems, you know, you know, rate us as, you know, hi, I would love that. You know, if you like oh, what you're yeah. listening to, it helps us out in the rankings. Uh, but if you're on Apple Podcasts and you leave us a five star, whatever you write, you know, we will read that out on air as well. And uh, yeah, you know, hit us up on, you know, on the YouTube if you're watching that. Leave us comments there. Twitter, leave us comments there. You know, whatever. You know, we, we love hearing from you guys. We had actually gotten one. I don't know because I had sent it to you, John. Um, I don't know if you had actually saw it. But we had gotten a uh, a Twitter, a uh, not a Twitter, a um, message on YouTube, uh, a comment on YouTube from uh, one of our fans, and uh, so I want. It says, okay, so <clears throat> it says uh, it's from Miranda Gibson, and she put me thinking about watching Dawson's Creek. Wow, this sounds pretty interesting. Josh, does he really? John, no, I'm making things up. And then she laughs and puts like the like the the monkey cover in her face. It was when we were talking about the uh, Vanderbeek. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, your story, your fake story about Dawson's Creek, got her interested, and then she found out as I did. No, nope, that didn't happen. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty pretty damn funny. I had to uh, had to include that. Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, yeah, and be sure to hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at Last Call H I M Y M. We've only got. Also, two. remember if you want to hear our stories about things that have happened in the past, don't forget to hit us up on Patreon. That's right. Uh, we've only got three more episodes of season three left, so keep an eye out for that, and then uh, we'll be hopping into the back half of uh, season two of How I Met Your Father soon. Hell yeah! And then we'll be starting up season four. Everybody, it's going to be a good time. I'm pretty excited. Ooh, I just realized that if we alternate that way, where we do like half a season of How I Met Your Mother and then half a season of How I Met Your Father, we don't have to double up on podcasts. Yeah, I mean, uh, it won't be half and half just for the simple fact that uh, How I Met Your Father won't come out as often, as quickly as we're doing the show. Oh, that's fair. But yeah, I, I think after what how we did it last time, I don't want to do double ups anymore. You know, once How I Met Your Father starts, you know, a new season, it's going to be break time for How I Met Your Mother. So you heard it first here, peeps. Yeah. But, hey, we'll keep it coming. You know, we don't want to get burned out. That's kind of what happened. Yeah. Uh, we, we started to burn ourselves out a little bit there. So we had to slow it down. But, yeah, so uh, be sure, like I said, Twitter, Instagram, at last call, H-I-M-Y-M. And uh, I think that's all I got for him, man. What do you got for him? Listen. Say it once, say it a million times. You don't have to go home, but you can't listen here. All right, catch you next time.